competition is an amazing thing. A little over 10 years ago, we had the Ferrari 360. This is faster than that. Less than five years ago, we had the V8 Audi R8. This is faster than that. By today's standards, this car's performance can remain relevant in a conversation about Aston Martins and Porsche 911s. And that's insane because this is a muscle car. Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are checking out the 2016 Chevy Camaro SS. The 2016 Camaro is over 200 pounds lighter than the previous Camaro and it now sits 20 pounds under the Mustang GT at 3,685 pounds. While the body and white's mass was reduced by 133 pounds, the structural rigidity is up 28%. The car was analyzed for every gram that could be removed with major weight savings coming from an aluminum instrument panel, aluminum front suspension links, and a 26 pound loss from the five link rear suspension. Under the hood is the 6.2 liter V8 LT1 engine first introduced in the new Corvette. Resting in the Camaro, it does include some unique components such as the Tri-Y exhaust manifolds. It's rated at 455 horsepower and 455 pound feet of torque. On the outside, the car is mean, aggressive at pretty much any angle. Angle. You'll notice air curtains on the front fascia, forcing air around the wheels to reduce drag. There's four different driving modes, altering the throttle mapping, engine sound through the dual mode exhaust, power steering calibration, stability systems, magnetic ride damping calibration, and even the ambient lighting if the vehicle is equipped. Overall, the interior is actually really nice. These are super comfortable seats. I actually like them more than the seats in the Corvette. Good bolstering to them. And you know, this is kind of a small area. So you're kind of in this little cramped cockpit area. I really like it. You've got plenty of room for your legs. You know, headroom's a little bit limited Limited, but I'm fine and I'm at 6'1". Um, so you've got plenty of adjustment in the steering wheel to get everything positioned right. Uh, it just could feel a little bit cramped depending on, you know, your size. But other than that, I mean, it's a nice area. Everything, you know, the materials in here really nice. You've got these lighting accents, which can change color depending on which mode you're in. That's pretty cool. You've got a screen up here. You've got uh, Apple CarPlay. The touchscreen itself actually is pretty responsive. So I do like that. Even the climate controls, you know, good uh, intuitive system here. You can change it by rotating a knob around the air vents which is pretty cool so you don't really have to take your eyes off the road you know to adjust the temperature so I do like that and you've got a plethora of gauges up front looking at the speedometer the tachometer and then in between all kinds of different information uh, the different driving modes and all kinds of different settings which you can change in here so overall very nice interior I really do like it um, certainly an upgrade over the previous generation and for this segment a very very competitive very nice interior now is it perfect uh, of course not you know Two major complaints I have with the Camaro, uh, the first one being visibility, looking out the front, super narrow, looking to the left, the right, super narrow, out the back, you just kind of have a sliver to look through uh, out the rear view mirror. Now, apparently this isn't uh, that concerning because it's always had poor visibility and it does look super awesome on the outside. So, I mean, I have to give them credit. It looks cool. Uh, personally, I don't like the sacrifice in visibility. Um, you know, it's one of those things where every single stoplight, you're going to be leaning forward if you're taller to look at the light and see when it turns green things like that um, you know you're gonna be moving your body around to look a lot in this vehicle but you know it does look awesome uh, and you know visibility it's okay like I've gotten used to it I thought I was gonna not like it uh, more than I do and, and you know actually I've kind of adjusted to it I still don't like how much they've sacrificed but you will adjust to it something that I am not keen on uh, is the angle of this touchscreen so the touchscreen is tilted down and I'm assuming that's done to reduce glare but, you know, here's the story. The Chevy Malibu has it tilted up. It's also exposed. There's no cover for it. Um, and yet they talked about different materials that they selected for the touchscreen so that it wouldn't be super reflective. Well, in this car, if you're looking at it, so here's a perspective of, you know, what it looks like to me looking at it. If you have these white seats, uh, basically all you see is the reflection of the white seats when you look at the screen, uh, if the sun is shining outside. And so for me, you know, it's pretty frustrating that you can't even see the screen uh, because it's tilted downward. I think it would make much more sense to have it tilted upward and put a slight cover on it or just have it tilted upward and deal with the fact that there's going to be a glare occasionally uh, because that's exactly what they do in the Chevy Malibu. 
So personally, uh, I wish it wasn't tilted like that. It's kind of like if you were to get on an airplane um, and then you know, you're about to start watching a movie and then the person in front of you leans their chair all the way back and you're like, oh, are you kidding? And they've leaned it back and now you can't see it as well and you kind of get frustrated. That's exactly how I feel when I look at this screen. Now I will say I do think there's a solution to it and I think the best thing that you can do in order to minimize the frustration with that screen is to just make sure you get seats that are black. If you get black seats, you won't see them reflected on the screen quite as much and you'll get used to the angle. The angle's not that bad. What's bad is the reflection of the seat. And so because of that, I would say it would be a better idea to get a, a black seat or a darker colored seat so that you don't have to worry about the reflection of it. So what's it like to drive? Well, it's a big car and it feels like a big car in the sense that it feels very planted like big heavy cars do, but it also feels very nimble. It's very agile. It's very eager and willing to turn in sharply when you make it do that. And so from that standpoint, even though, you know, 3,700 pounds is a lot of weight, regardless of what kind of car we're talking about, it still feels very agile for the weight that it has and very willing to turn in. As far as the manual transmission, for the most part, I really do like it. The clutch uses most of its range for actuation, so you get plenty of control, and it's actually really smooth. One of the smoothest out there. I'd say, if anything, the Mustang was maybe slightly smoother, but not by much. Very easy manual transmission to learn how to use, and very simple to use for those who already have driven manual transmissions. The gear shifting is a little bit notchy and has a nice precision to it, a good weight to it as well. I do like the gear shifting actuation in here. Regarding the gearing, however, usually I'd be a bit concerned with taller gearing like this vehicle has. Um, and the reason being for that, for example, this car in second gear, you can pretty much hit 80 miles an hour, or just under 80 miles an hour. So on, you know, driving legal speeds, you'll never be able to top out in second gear. And from, you know, a sound perspective, that's kind of a bummer because it sounds amazing once you get into those higher RPMs. Um, for example, here just at 50 and then, oh man, <laughs> that just sounds great. But my point is it has pretty tall gearing. And so usually that can take away a little bit uh, from the driving dynamics and from how fun it is to drive. You can pretty much just leave it in second gear and do anything. Now as a comparison, the Mustang GT with the performance package and 3.73 rear differential like this has, has more aggressive gearing for gears one through six. Every single gear is more aggressive. So it's not that, you know, it's totally a crazy idea for there to be a car out there with more aggressive gearing. That said, in pretty much any gear, third gear like we are now, you put your foot down, you've got plenty of torque. So even though it has tall gearing, the torque band is very wide and you know, pretty much any gear you're in, you're gonna get good acceleration. Um, so it's really just comes down to, you know, on streets, you're gonna wish you had a slightly more aggressive gearing. On a racetrack, you're probably gonna love the way this is set up. Speaking about the sound modes, there's actually four of them. So if you have the dual mode exhaust, which this is equipped with, uh, basically it has a bypass valve so that the exhaust can be routed uh, around the muffler uh, rather than through the muffler so you can get a louder sound. So you have stealth mode, touring mode, sport mode, and track mode, four different sound modes. Um, and I believe there's also a way which it alters the amount of induction noise that you hear in the cabin. Uh, somehow mechanically done that they do that. Uh, seems to be a feature that everyone's doing these days, but regardless, there's four different modes. So we're in stealth now, and if I put my foot down, not quite that loud, and then if I put it over into track mode and put my foot down, you definitely get a bit more roar out of it. Another cool thing, which is kind of silly, but it does have the active rev matching. You're not hearing my awesome footwork. You're hearing the car do it for you. So if I do put my foot down, it starts to drop and then it realizes, oh, you know, you've got active red match and you didn't actually change the gear, so it blips it back up, which I think is kind of cool. Um, it's pretty awesome. It works really well uh, throughout all the gears, so if I just go down to fourth gear, now to third, and into second, perfectly rev matched, plenty of power. Yeah, it's awesome. Now, fuel economy, you don't really care about fuel economy, do you? This is a big 6.2 liter V8. It actually does have cylinder deactivation, which is pretty cool. Uh, on this trip, I've gone 80 miles so far and I'm averaging 15.9 miles per gallon, so nothing exceptional. It's rated 16 in the city, 25 on the highway. Now, one of the tricky things they do, which I believe is done to avoid a gas guzzler tax, is when you shift from first to second, let's say you're accelerating at a light, um, it'll say on the indicator shift first to fourth for efficiency, 
And then not only that, but depending on you know how you, how lightly you're accelerating, what speed you're going, it'll actually force you into fourth rather than second. So there's a solenoid in there that activates. Uh, depending on the scenario, you have to be light on the throttle, going a certain speed. There's a certain set of parameters, but you pull it back from first to go into second, and instead it puts it into fourth. And it's kind of concerning when that happens. You feel like, what did I just do wrong? Like I don't know how to shift into second. Um, it's it's the thing like forcing you to do that, and it's kind of annoying. Uh, the good news is. It only takes place at low speeds, so it's not like you're really going for it. If you're on full throttle, it's never going to activate that. So if you're actually, you know, giving it a good throttle and trying to accelerate quickly, and you wanted to get in the second, it's not going to get in your way. It's just kind of a little trick that they've found, I guess, to uh, avoid the gas guzzler tax, which is kind of strange. At least that's what I read on Jalopnik. Who knows if that's true or not? But honestly, like, why else would you put in something a silly feature like that? It's not like the customer is saying, "Oh, I need it to automatically do it." Like, if you want to get efficient driving or whatever, you can shift yourself from first to fourth if you want so you certainly don't need a computer to do it for you about to go through a tunnel of course we need to have the windows down a little bit and we're down in second gear oh, <laughs> oh that's amazing that is amazing oh my god Another tunnel, yes, yes, another tunnel. We need it. It's for science and engineering so we can learn and stuff. That's what this channel is all about. We're getting our education here. Sound uh, is louder when you're in tight spaces. <laughs> oh, what a machine. All right, I have found myself some beautiful canyon roads here in Northern Oregon. That's Chevy's whole theme, right? Find new roads. Never driven on this road before, so I'm pretty excited about it. This thing is certainly handling it well. There's a little ground squirrel. Uh, so, you know, the steering actually feels really precise in this. You've got a nice weight build in it. It doesn't, you know, give you artificial feedback. It actually does a nice job uh, transmitting what's going on with the tires through the wheel. You've got a good amount of feedback, great weight to it, really precise. There may be a short delay in turn in, uh, but aside from that, I really do like the steering. Just killing these corners. So much grip. So you do have a heads up display. It gives you the speedometer. It gives you what gear you're in, a tachometer, and it even gives you a G meter. So that's kind of cool. You can know how close you are to the limit uh, mathematically rather than just by feel. Really strong Brembo brakes all around. Man, this thing is fun. So much grip. That leaf is not having as good of a time as I am. Oh my gosh. <laughs> is actually pretty good you know not a whole lot of travel to it really firm good modulation as you put more pressure down on it the throttle is a little bit different I would say though there's a little bit of a gap in there where there's a delay when you put your foot down to it actually doing anything so you kind of tap it like I'm doing now and nothing really happens uh, so you put your foot down and you do wait a little bit that said the engine is extremely responsive so once that throttle is fully opened you are flying <laughs> and it snaps I mean it's a really nice response once it does fully open up it's just kind of a short delay there in the throttle I think we can get one more Canyon run in oh man you know the magnetic ride control does an amazing job actually with the suspension it does feel really well damped even when you hit minor bumps and things it feels smooth and yet the body stays very flat through these corners Four piston calipers every corner. So much grip. You do have a limited slip differential in the rear, so you can uh, put down plenty of power. And of course, you've got enough if you want to step the rear out. I do have the traction control on just so I don't die. So much power. <laughs> Oh 
man, this thing is a blast. I mean, listen to it. It's just screaming. Real hard on the brakes. Into a hard corner. (laughs) So much grip. So much power. So much fun. I mean, honestly, this thing feels very close, if not just like a Corvette. The performance is just amazing. Such a vehicle. And it lets you play a little bit too, you know? You actually have to drive it. What a joy. These are the roads that this car was made for. Okay, so we'll get our launch control launch in, zero to 60. (laughs) Considering how much wheel spin there was there at the beginning, 4.9 seconds is pretty good. I think the uh, launch control is a little aggressive with the RPM. It starts at about 4,500, 4,000 RPM. It could probably do it at about 2,500, maybe 3,000 RPM, and you can get a better time. But 4.9 seconds, first try doing it. Pretty impressive. Uh, zero to 60 there. Uh, you do get quite a bit of road noise here on the highway. Um, you don't really hear much from the wind, but you definitely hear the tires. So pretty noisy in the cabin. Uh, one of the drawbacks uh, of this vehicle, I'd say, is just a noise level driving on the highway. It is fairly loud in here. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, you know what to do. Thanks for watching.